Half time at the Etihad Stadium, and the score currently stands Manchester City 1, PSG 0. My name is Cal Spellman. Welcome back to We're Not Really Here. Here to dissect those first 45 minutes are two natural born finishers. I hopefully uh, we won't be needing any more of them. Mr. Kevin Horlock and Sean Gota. Uh, Kev, I'm going to come to you first. Um, what a first half of football. Yeah, probably what we wasn't expecting in terms of PSG had most possession um, under the cosh a little bit, but whether the storm. Nearly the typical City moment come early on with the handball shout, so it was hedge of your seat stuff, but yeah, some game. It really is some, I mean, I mean, top to bottom. Have you been, have you been impressed, though, with, with City and what you've seen so far, Sean? Yes, whoa, whoa, whoa. What a, I mean, I'm on the edge of my seat, and um, it's, it's just so enthralling in terms of, you know, both teams really going at it. Um, the, the standard is really high. The, the, the pitch hasn't really affected the quality that's on the field because um, having to adjust a little bit with the, uh, the, the pitch in terms of it's, it's all smooth and everything, but again, the ball's still zipping and moving. The player's touch is all good. Um, it's really just a really great, entertaining game. I don't like the, the kid in play that the PSG are doing, you know, sometimes not being touched, rolling over. And they're, they're going to pull out every tactic in the book, you know, try to get yellow cards to players so that somewhere along the line, perhaps there's a second yellow. But City have, have really stood to it uh, and managed, managed it really well to, to not get the bookings. So we'll come to the, the goal in just a second, um, but, but the first key moment, Kev, you mentioned it there, was, was the handball that was given. So it, was, um, it seemed like a ball into the box. Uh, there was a reaction from the PSG players. Referee gave it. Then it went to VAR, and it, it wasn't a handball. And it was yeah, I just think it's a ridiculous decision. They obviously all claimed it like you expect them to. Um, you can tell from the Manchester City players' reactions it wasn't a penalty. I just, I just don't get why he gives it. He didn't look, just play on VAR. We all know if there was any hint of a handball, they would have pulled it back and give it. Yeah. So I just think it just caused havoc when he didn't need to. Yeah, unnecessarily. Um, so that was kind of the moment with the handball. Then, Sean, you know, it was kind of, there was a few kind of interchanges. And before you know it, Riyad Mahrez, talk us through the goal. Yeah, well, you know, again, City, looking at them, how they were pressed and so forth. But they, they maneuvered the ball. They moved to get it forward. Mahrez, he gets the ball and you always want him to get on his left foot because you know what he can do. He can deliver sort of quality cross. But, you know, we, Kevin's talking earlier about needing a bit of luck. I mean, he strikes this ball. It goes through two, you know, goes through the defender's legs. I think it's Marquinhos and, and the goalkeeper. Nut, nut. It was a nut, nut. <laughs> yeah, yeah, double nut, nut. Yeah. Um, Cleanly struck, goes in. I mean, we're going absolutely mental. I'm sure everybody home is going mental. And it was brilliant because I think that sort of then settled, settled the players because everybody's now into the game, moving the ball. Uh, and, and they have to up their game. They have, to, And this is what's made it such an entertaining game. Um, I'm, I'm really pleased that it's this way because now they've got to come. And I can see, again, second half, the, you know, City really controlling the game and, and going on to score uh, another goal and possibly even a third. But it's going to be entertaining. Love that, Sean. I've just heard a cheer as well, I think, from a City fan who's come around the stadium. Um, Kev, as well, though, what was quite different about our, our goal was it wasn't usually the 20, 30 passes beforehand and a little bit of brilliance and a cutback. We actually subverted to, to another way of scoring kind of before Mahrez got the ball. I mean, it was a, a long ball over the top. No, I, I had this conversation on, on Saturday. The ball goes back to Edison and, and, and in most instances, if it's another football club with a different goalkeeper, you think, oh, God, we've gone all the way back. Look, there's still an opportunity to score. It's unbelievable the technique he, he has. Um, the lads know he's got it. It is a we it's another weapon yeah. of how to score a goal. You, he hasn't always got to do it. He hasn't on. always got to be these 15, 20 passes. It was an unbelievable pass, and it, and it surprised PSG. Um, caught them out, and it, yeah, an assist. And assist for it, indeed. Um, now, obviously, that was kind of the goal. And then, as you said, actually, Kevin, once we got into around 30 minutes, the stats came up for uh, the game, and it was that PSG had a lot of possession. They did have to weather the storm, uh, Sean. It's quite unusual for, for our City team to come up against a team that are maybe controlling possession, unlike them. Yes, it is. But City always knew, and Pep said it in, in his, in his pre-game talk, there's going to be moments that... City would just have to manage it without the game, without the ball in terms of uh, sit back and sort of um, still manage it even though you don't have the ball. They had their period where they're, they're, they've got they've got possession, they're moving it, and it was a case of, and it was also a time where the players could get a breather because once or twice I looked at us and I thought one or two of us look as though we're breathing heavy, which meant that we had a 10-minute spell of high tempo, pushing forward, going and attack, running back, 
back. So I think City sort of managed that period really well. And then when we won possession at times, we just shifted around and caught our breath in possession, uh, which was absolutely brilliant. I think the good step from that, looking at that, is, is all right, they've had seven attempts, which Pep would be disappointed with, but there's none on target. Mm. Um, so that tells you that Manchester City are getting bodies on the line, they're getting in and around it, and maybe limiting to, to shots from distance at times. The, the one that jumps out at me, and I don't know what you both make of this, actually, I'm so used to seeing that they can almost have 100, if not double, the opposition's passes. I mean, PSG have actually nearly put together 100 more passes than us. Is that a worry, do you think, Sean, or no, if it, they're kind of... Well, don't read too much into that. It, it only becomes a worry if they're working our goalkeeper. You yeah. know, there's, there's, there's possession periods and they're, they're working Addison. Addison. Addison's have to make a save here or there. We're putting bodies on your line and, and the several corners. It can then become a worry because what that, that develops to be momentum. PhD will have momentum and with that comes belief. And then you'll start seeing Neymar start doing these little flicks. Uh, and so we haven't seen that. We've seen him dribble and try to look for cute passes. Uh, when he starts doing flicks, that'll be a sign of certain showing that he's confident. And up until now, City's done a great job of that. For, for me, they can have as many passes as they like now. Um, and, and look, it might take away from the spectacle that we all want to see. I'd be happy with PSG having the ball for the entire second half, making millions of passes, but the important thing for me is that the passes aren't in them real dangerous areas. We've mm. seen it a couple of times where they played through the midfield line into pockets which are dangerous. Mm -hmm. That's where their threat is. So as long as Manchester City stay compact, they can have it for as long as they want. Thank you, gents. Um, all right, let's take a slight pause. Everyone just take a breath. Again, I'm saying that to myself uh, from proceedings. Um, you've been letting us know on social media how you've been watching the game and, and throughout the show. And also, um, there's been some lovely tweets coming in around We're Not Really Here. So thank you very much for that this evening. One of my favourites, though, I think has come from one of our supporters club over in Belt Melbourne. I was showing the lads before. They tweeted an hour ago. So this was, I think, just before kickoff saying, disaster in Melbourne. The Melbourne Blues have turned up to the pub, but the manager slept in. So the shut was down. And then 15 minutes later, about 20 minutes later, the tweet say, take two, the manager's up, and we've been let in. So they're, they're watching the game. Well, if any of you are watching, there's a bit of advice from Kevin here. Take a hip flask with brandy in so you can have a little swig before you get in there. There you go. And That's it's right. not a panic. <laughs> See, we cover everything on this on show. Yeah. <laughs> um, then, of course, we also had well, Stephen, who got in touch to say, already for the game tonight, uh, Bella thinks the Blues will win 3-1. I mean, that still very much is on the cards. Um, but do keep them coming in, hashtag WNRH, as well as your mystery blue guesses. Um, so let's take a quick look at our Mystery Blue this week. We've had some guesses come in as well. Uh, hashtag WNRH, of course, if you want to throw in a guess. So some of the guesses we've had. Aguero from Seth on Twitter. Um, we've had Laporte from El Hanovic. Um, Negredo from Luke Zhang. Uh, Carlos Tevez from Blue Johnny. Uh, Brad thinks it might be Gareth Barry. Or Kevin Hughes think it might be Alano. I mean, all sorts of guesses. Who, who's your name, Kev? I, I was going to go Tevez. You were going to go Tevez? Yeah, I okay, was, that's yeah. interesting. Did you have a little, you, you thinking, Sean? I was thinking of grow. I was thinking of grow. Uh, was... But when I heard that show Tevez, I thought, hmm, that, hold on, hold on. That, that blurry is it, coming. <sighs> it's still blurry. It's got to be Surge. <laughs> yeah. Surge. And, and Kevin De Bruyne are behind, is it? I'm hearing, oh, hang on, I'm going to get it confirmed. Is it, is it Sergio Aguero? It's not Sergio Aguero. I mean, the rogue, by the way, someone sent in a guest saying David Pizarro. Now, if you, whoever's called him out, I mean, that is real kind of oh, acute city knowledge. If that is correct, unbelievable. Um, full time is where you'll need to find us uh, to get the answer of our mystery blue. You've still got time to get your guesses in. Um, but before we go any further, gents, as we look towards the second half now, the score currently stands at 3-1 on aggregate. I felt you made a good point to me, Kev, going, nothing has still really changed for PSG. They still need no, not two really, goals. Yeah, yeah they, they, they'll be quite happy with their performance um, and the possession they've had. So they still need two goals, which gets them back in it. So I think you're going to see more of the same from PSG in that respect. Um, I just want to see Manchester City manage the game now. Look, they don't need anything else. So, so maybe for once this season or for once over the last few years, be boring. Just get to the final. Get to the final. That's what we're hoping for. And Sean, for you, as you, you know, what, what are you it, looking for? Kevin's absolutely right. I think it's about managing the game because really we go off and it's uh, nil nil. We, we win this. And I think it's about managing the game. I think we can go and score another goal, but it's through how we manage it. And this is where we can pick them off. So, again, the stats in terms of keeping the ball for, or them keeping the ball for loads of passes, totally fine because we can now 
get our bodies, get our shape. Uh, we're great at keeping the ball, but we can actually use that counter. So I would imagine somewhere around 60, we, we, we were freshened out with, with some, some pace, uh, with that ability to be able to counter and really hurt them as well. There was, and also with that thing you were saying now, we've seen in the odd time, the kind of get in between our defence and midfield. How do you think maybe City or Pep are going to look to come back? Because that does feel where they've been at their most like dangerous to score, I guess, Kev. Yeah, just out, being out of possession, just maybe bringing the wide men in a little bit more narrow, Mares and Foden, and just deny them that space yeah. in there. Because that's what they're looking for. Obviously, they've got the um, use of Mbappe if they need it um, to be... be Bought on later on, but yeah, just manage the, the spaces and, and don't let the balls be played between you. Maybe, um, maybe a little Sergio Aguero appearance, depending on how the second half goes, Sean. Well, he, he would be an ideal because you know, if you get a chance, the Sergio Aguero puts it away, <laughs> <laughs> just like you did. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, all right, well, uh, lovely people, 45 minutes to go, and hopefully. I don't know what I'm going to be like if it does, you know, stay this way. But um, we're going to be talking about us uh, heading over to Istanbul. I mean, I, see, it gets me nervous now thinking about it. But 45 minutes to go. Currently stands at 1-0 Manchester City against PSG. Uh, the second half is just about to take place. Remember, full commentary over on the Manchester City app. And then come back here full time as we're going to get in a full debrief of the whole game uh, and beyond, fingers crossed. But I guess for one final time, come on City. <laughs>